let me uh, introduce the high celebrate, uh, celebrate, celebrant of the Holy Mass. The uh, high celebrant of the, the Holy Mass um, uh, had a, um, a beautiful life. He was the ceremony master of three popes, uh, Paul VI, uh, John Paul II, and uh, Benedict XVI. Piero Marini, Archbishop Piero Marini is the president of the Pontifical Committee of the International Eucharist Congress. He uh, accompanied uh, St. John Paul II uh, to 76 uh, uh, trips. In, the, in an interview t given to the Hungarian radio, uh, he said that uh, they had a great trust between him and the, the Pope John Paul II. They lived together uh, great joys and difficulties. Uh, uh, for example, in 1981, the outrage uh, uh, by Ali Akce, or when the uh, Holy Mass um, at Sarajevo, the, uh, the uh, serious uh, illness was visible for the world. He uh, experienced the drama dramatic uh, events in 1987 in, when in Santiago de Chile in O'Higgins Park, during the Holy uh, Mass, there were tanks uh, which r ran down the, uh, the faithful listening to the Holy Mass. The, the tear gas uh, reached uh, the Holy Father. Uh, the, at the end of the ceremony, uh, the, the, the Holy Father shouted that love is stronger. Uh, Bishop Marini had a great um, um, compassion and, um, and uh, attention. And he uh, encouraged us when uh, he had to postpone this uh, event. This February, he said, the Congress should be organized as a sign of re rebirth. With this hope, we are here together with him at the Holy Mass. The uh, musical uh, s uh, uh, service will be uh, implemented by uh, Zoltan Kodai Hungarian Choir uh, School. Thank you for your attention. After the uh, the break, we, we uh, wait for you uh, to the this holy mass.
You are just, O Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accord with your merciful love. You are just, O Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accord with your merciful love. just, O oh Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accord with your merciful love. In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Pax Vobis. Et 
Fratres agnus camus peccata nostra, ut aptissimus ad sacra misteria celebranda. Confiteor de omnipotenti et vobis fratres, quia peccavi nimis cogitazione, verbo, opere et omissione. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Idio precorbeatam Mariam semper virginem omnes angelos et santos et vos fratres orare pro me ad dominum Deum nostrum. Miseriatur nostri omnipotens Deus, et dimissis peccatis nostris perducat nos ad vitam eternam. Deus, per quem nobis et redentio venit et prestatur adoptio, filios dilectionis tue benignus intende, ut in Cristo credentibus et vera tribuato libertas et hereditas eterna, per dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. It makes me happy to suffer for you, as I am suffering now, and in my own body I do what I can to make up all that has still to be undergone by Christ for the sake of his body, the Church. I became the servant of the Church when God made me responsible for delivering God's message to you. The message, which was a mystery hidden for generations and centuries and has now been revealed to his saints. It was God's purpose to reveal it to them and to show all the rich glory of this mystery to pagans. The mystery is Christ among you. Your hope is glory, uh, your hope of glory. This is the Christ we proclaim. This is the wisdom in which we thoroughly train everyone and instruct everyone to make them all perfect in Christ. It is for this I struggled wearily on, helped only by his power driving me irresistibly. Yes, I want you to know that I do have to struggle hard for you and for those in Laodicea and for so many others who have never seen me face to face. It is all to bond you together in love and to stir your mind so that your understanding may come to full development until you really know God's secret in which all the jewels of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. Verbum Domini.
In God is my safety and my glory. In God is my safety and my glory. <clears throat> In God alone be at rest, my soul. For my hope comes from Him. In God is my safety and my glory. my rock, my stronghold, my fortress I stand firm. In God is my safety and my glory. In God is my safety and my glory. to my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Dominus Vobiscum. Lectio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. On the Sabbath, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. And the man was there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees were watching him to see if he would cure a man on the Sabbath, hoping to find something against him. But he knew their thoughts, and he said to the man with a withered hand, Stand up, come out into the middle. And he came out and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I put it to you, is it against the law on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? Then he looked around at them all and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He did so and his hand was better. But they were furious and began to discuss the best way of dealing with Jesus.
Le letture bibliche che la Chiesa ci fa proclamare in questo giorno, lunedì della ventitreesima settimana del tempo ordinario, The biblical readings of that the Church presents to us today, the Monday of the third, 23rd week of the mid-year mid period, focus our attention entirely on the figure of Christ and illuminate why all sources, all our sources come from Him. Christ is the mystery of God, says the Apostle Paul today to us. That is to say, he is a plan of God whom he has prepared for us for ages and generations and who is now being revealed to his saints. This now corresponds to the fullness of time. The fullness of time is not just a single point in history, but also a theological concept. It is the fulfillment of the expectations and promises of the Old Testament and the beginning of the new messianic period, the time of God. The coming of Jesus marks the beginning of a new phase in God's time, the final period of salvation history, the coming of Christ marks the beginning of a new humanity. With Adam, the age of sin and death began for mankind, but Christ, when the fullness of time had come, ushered in the age of the sa the saint for mankind. We all belong to this new humanity. This time has now come because God's mystery is manifested in his transforming the world and especially man, so that Jesus Christ himself may become flesh in him. In him, St. Paul continues, are all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. The salvation that comes from Christ is now not just for Israel, but for every nation, for every person. Your life, says St. Paul, is constituted by the paschal mystery of Christ, that is, by his death and resurrection, and therefore carries hope for the world. But in order for people to know the mystery of God and above all to believe and live it, they need someone to proclaim it to them. The apostolic ministry, however, is not limited to preaching, but also involves witness, especially witness accompanied by suffering says St. Paul. Paul knows well the connection between love and the cross. For the proclamation of God's mystery, St. Paul had to endure toil, imprisonment, and beatings. While it's true that there's nothing to salvation, it's necessary that it should reach people. And it cannot reach people without someone paying the price, without suffering for it. It is the apostle's task to pay this price so that God's plan may be brought to full fruition. I want you to know how much I'm striving for you and for all those who do not know me personally, so that strengthen, strengthened in heart and united in love, they may come to the full riches of perfect knowledge, the knowledge of the mystery of God, the mystery of Christ. 
Jesus Christ is also, also the, the main character of the Bible passage we have just read from Luke's Gospel. The evangelist draw the attention of his listeners to two details in particular, which can be understood in the light of Christ. The withered hand and the Sabbath law. The evangelist tells us nothing about the intention of the man with the withered hand. He doesn't seem to have entered the synagogue to ask Jesus to heal his hand. The people Jesus met were all physically or spiritually sick. If someone thinks that he is spiritually healthy, like the rich young man, he will realize his hidden illness when he meets Jesus. Here is why the doctor is one of our typical images of Jesus. Wherever he, Jesus, went, he did good, Peter says of him, healing all who were possessed by demons, for God was with him. The Gospel teaches that sickness is not just a physical fact, but a diminution of the fullness of life in relation to one's vocation. According to the Gospel, then, to be ill is to be in crisis with oneself, to have no understanding of oneself or of one's relationships with others and with the wor world around us. Illness refers to a person's loss of sight of the meaning of life. The evangelist then goes on to point out that this man's withered member was precisely his right hand. From this, we can easily conclude that it was difficult for him to work. We can see in him all those who are excluded from the world of work. They have lost their jobs or haven't yet found them. Luke also emphasizes the position of the patient. Stand up and come to the middle. This exhortation can apply to believers of all ages. What do we put at the center of our lives? The pursuit of money, profit, or the dignity of the person, especially if that person is weak, sick, or poor. Jesus finally turns to the man with the withered hand and says, stretch out your hand. The man obeys and is healed. This reminds us of God's words at creation. When the world took shape in obedience to the word of its creator, on this Sabbath day, Jesus continued the work of creation by restoring this man's ability to work. The scribes and the Pharisees, the evangelist continues, notice this man and in their hearts they are not waiting for the miracle of miracle to be fulfilled to rejoice at a man's recovered health but only to accuse Jesus let us beware for the ideology of the Pharisees today can lead to a distortion of our thinking Luke also draws our attention to the Sabbath law. God didn't make this law to make things difficult for people, 
but to save and protect them. We read this in the second book of the Law of Moses. Remember that you yourself were a slave in the land of Egypt, but the Lord your, your God led you out with a strong hand and, out, and outstretched arm. That's why the Lord your God commanded the Sabbath to be observed." End of quotation. You are a free man. You cannot be a slave again. The work that does not allow rest is the slaves, not the free man's. The day of rest reminds you that you are a free man. So the Sabbath law was born as a law of liberty, a warning of God's saving work. And it is given to us not to wrong others, but to set others free. Moreover, on this occasion, Jesus utters a sentence that must have seemed scandalous, to say the least, to those around him. The Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. In other words, the Son of Man is able to fulfill the Sabbath, revealing God's love, which goes as far as total self-surrender. Jesus, therefore, is Lord of the Sabbath in the sense that he gives his life and dies for us on the cross. The revelation of God's love couldn't be more intense. The law of the Sabbath is nothing other than the law of love, the law of the giving of life. Therefore, Sunday expects much more of us than the Sabbath expects of the Jews. Sunday reminds the Christian man, today you are celebrating the love of God, who in Christ gave himself for you. So you must live according to that love. With the love sacrifices that Jesus performs on the Sabbath, he wants to prepare everyone for the Sabbath to be replaced and fulfilled by Sunday. For Christians, Sunday is a day of love. The law of love embraces Sunday and especially the Eucharist, which is the heart of Sunday. On Sunday, we celebrate the Eucharist. It is the day we celebrate the salvation has come, that God has revealed love. The need for love that God has given us is the basis of the need for love that we must give to one another. The Eucharist leads us to fulfill the law of love which we receive from, from the Lord and which the Lord expects us to pass on to others. The words of Jesus, stretch out your hand, are being spoken to us today at the beginning of the 52nd International Eucharistic Congress in Budapest. At today's Mass, as the Divine Doctor approaches us, we realize that the Eucharist, which we receive cleansed of our sins, is not primarily a sacrament reserved for the righteous, but a signpost for us sinners. In Holy Communion, having said, Lord, I'm not worthy, we too reach out our hands to the consecrated bread and allow ourselves to be grasped by the hand of the risen Lord. He comes to save us. He comes to help us to step out of the difficulties in which we live so that we may continue with renewed enthusiasm on the journey of our life of faith. 
the Eucharistic Congress is an opportunity offered by the Church to all believers to live the Eucharist in our daily lives. To live the, the liturgy that we celebrate together is to live from what the liturgy reveals to us, the forgiveness of sins asked and received the word of God that we hear, the thanksgiving that arises, and the Eucharist that we receive as Holy Communion. From the celebration of the Eucharist, we must learn that the future of our faith depends not only on how we celebrate the liturgy, but rather on how we can live from the liturgy we celebrate. We are all invited at the end of each liturgical feast to become more and more the body of Christ and to go and live among others with the same joy and friendship with which the Lord comes to us. Our vocation is to be apostles of the gospel. At the same time, let us not forget that the task of each disciple is not only to believe in Christ in the abstract, but also to witness to the gospel by the example of their lives so that it may touch the hearts of those who listen and convert. Like Paul, we too must pay the price, the effort, the inconvenience, the suffering, and we gladly pay this price because it is in this way that God's plan of salvation is fulfilled. This is of value to those to whom we preach the gospel and gives meaning to our toil and suffering. This is the only way to make the seed that has been sown bear fruit. May this Eucharistic Congress teach us that the celebrating of the Eucharist always means fulfilling the law of love which we receive from the Lord and which we are called by the Lord to transmit to others. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we ask our Lord that through his Holy Son he may pour out his blessings on the faithful and the clergy united in the Church by the Holy Spirit. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he may be kept safe and sound to guide your, need, guide your people.
for the bishops and priests of the church to be enlightened by the light of the Holy Spirit. For the peace and unity of all Christianity. Dominum de For those that are sick or suffering, that they may see your compassionate face. For all our faithful departed brothers and sisters, may they rest in peace. Lord God, our shield and our strength, hear the prayers your church offers. You put a zealous faith into our hearts. Fulfill our faithful requests. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Das Wort, das mit uns geht, das uns trägt und uns die Richtung weist. Schöne von Liebe, die Wasser brechen her. Alle meine Quellen schwingen in dir, in dir.
hergibt, wenn uns das Herz anklagt. Ströme von lebendigem Wasser brechen her. Das Licht in Dunkelheit, du erleuchtest unser Lebensweg. Ströme von lebendigem Wasser brechen her. Das Land, das sich erbarmt, das uns rettet, uns erlöst und liebt. Ströme von lebendigem Wasser brechen her. Orate fratere, suc meum ac vestrum sacrificium acceptabile fiat apud Deum Patrem omnipotente. Deus autoras sincere devotionis et pace, Da quesumus ut et maiestatem tuam conveniente rocmunere veneremus, et sacri participazione misteri feliciter sensibus uniamus, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Dominus vobiscum, sursum corda, grazia sagamus, domino de Amen. Mm -hmm. 
salutare. Nos tibi sempre tu bicque grazia sagere. Domine sante pater omnipotens eterne Deus, qui per filium dilectionis tue, sicut conditor generis est umani, ita benignissimus reformator. Un de merito tibi cum te servi un creature, te redempti riti collaudan universi, et uno sancti tuit decor de benedicunt. Qua propter nos cum omnibus angelis celebramus, Iucunda, semper confessione dicentes. Santo. Santus es Domine, et merito te laudo tomnis a te condita creatura, quia per filium tuum Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum, Spiritus Sancti operante virtute, vivificas et santificas universa, et populum tibi congregare non desinis, ut a soli sortus que ad occasum oblatio munda offeratur nomini tuo. Supplice sergo te Domine de precamo, ut ec munera que tibi sacranda de tulimus, e odem spirito santificare dinieris, ut corpus et sanguis fiant fili tui Domini nostri Iesu Christi, cuius mandato ec misteria celebramus. Ipse eni, in qua notte tradebato, accepit panem, et tibi gratia sagens benedixit, fregit, dedicque discipuli suis dicens, accipite et manducate ex hoc omnes, hoc est enim corpus meum, quod provovis tradetum. Simili modo postu abcenatum est, accipiens calicem, et tibi gratia sagens benedictis. Deditque discipuli suis dicens, accipite et bibite ex eo omnes. Ic est enim calix et sanguinis mei, novi et eterni testamenti, qui provobis et promultis et fundetur in remissionem peccatorum. Hoc facite, in meam commemorazione. Mysterium Fidei Mortem Tua
Memore si giur domine, iusdem filitui salutifere passionis, nec non mirabilis resurrezionis et ascensionis in celum, sedet prestorante salto in umaius adventum, offerimus tibi gracias referentes, hoc sacrificium vivum et sanctum. Respice quesimus in oblazionem ecclesiae tue, et agnoscien sostiam, cuius voluisti immolazione placari, concede, ut qui corpore et sanguine fili tui reficimur, spiritu aius sancto repleti, unum corpus et unus spiritus inveniamur in Cristo. Ipse nos tibi perficia punus eternum, ut cum erectis tuis ereditatem consequi variamus, in primis cum Beatissima Virgine Dei Genitrice, Maria, cum Beato Iosef Eius Ponzo, cum Beatis Apostolis Tuis et Glorius Martiribus, et Omnius Sanctis Quos Quorum Intercessione Perpetuo, ad ut te confidimus adiuvari. Ec postia nostri reconciliationis proficia pesumus Domine, a totius mundi pacem ad que salutem. Ecclesiam tuam peregrinantem in terra, in fide et caritate firmare dignieris, cum famulo tuo Papa, nostro Francisco, et episcopo nostro Petro, cum episcopali ordine, et in universo clero, et in omni populo acquistionis tue. Vobit quid familiae, quam tibi astare voluptus de adesto, propistus omnes filios tuis ubisquo disperos tibi, clement pater miseratus coniu. Fratres nostros defuntos, et omnes qui tibi placentes, ex hoc seculo transierunt, erenium tuum benignus admite, ubi foris speramus, Ut simul gloria tua pereniter satiemur, per Christum Dominum nostrum, per quem mundo bona cuncta largiris. Per ipsu et cum ipso et in isso, est divideo patri omnipotenti, in unitate spiritu santi, Omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Precepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater nostre, qui es dicevis, santifice tur non et tu, Da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, utope misericordia tua adiuti, et a peccato simo semper liberi, et ab omni perturbazione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Via tuum e seregum, et potestas, et gloria, et seregum. 
Domine Iesu Christe, qui dixisti apostolis tuis, pacem meam do vobis, pacem relinquo vobis. Ne respices peccata nostra, set fidem ecclesie tue, e ampe secondum voluntatem tuam pacificare et godunare dinieris, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum, et uscritu tu, offerte vobis pace. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce qui tollit peccata mundi, beati qui ad acena mani vocate sunt. Domini. Dictum di verbo et sanabitur anima mea.
Fidelibus tuis Domine, quos et verbi tui et celestis sacramenti pabulo nutris et vivificas. Ita dilecti fini tui tantis moneribus proficere, ut eius vites semper consortes effici mereamu, qui vite treniat in secula seculorum.
Before the end of the Mass, let me share a couple of pieces of information with you. After the Holy Mass, we're going to have a lunch break in the in pavilions F and G. We are awaiting for you at the buffets. And I kindly ask the cooperation of the pilgrims so that uh, lunch could proceed efficiently. As for the workshops of the afternoon, they will start at half past two in pavilions A, B, E1 and E2. In the break, of course, we're going to project the titles of the workshops from among which you can select. We kindly ask you to arrive in the selected workshop. I'm in their venue in time at least 10 minutes beforehand the start. Those who wish to confess will have the opportunity to do so at the entrance of the chamber that you can see at the other side uh, of the pavilion. And we kindly ask uh, the majority of the fathers uh, to help us with the confessions. Allow us to give you some technical information of the rest of the day. After the mass, there will be a lunch break, and you are welcome to visit the buffets in the, buff in the pavilion F and G opposite the plenary hall. With regard to lunch, we kindly ask the pilgrims to cooperate with the organizers to ensure a smooth distribution of the lunch. After lunch, the afternoon facultations will start at 2.30 p.m. in pavilions A, B, E1, and E2. During the break, the titles of the facultations will be displayed from which you can choose the one you would like to attend. Please arrive to the selected facultation on time at least 10 minutes before the start. Those who would like to confess will have the opportunity to do so during the lunch break in the foyer of the chapel, which can be found on the other side of the pavilion B. We kindly ask our priests to participate in the confession. Thank you for your attention. Dominus vobiscum. Sit nomen Domini benedictum. Adiutorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Ite missa est. Deus. 